we're going to be talking about how you use EMDR and its modifications safely to treat people across the dissociative continuum, <coughs> meaning not especially dissociative, ranging to dissociative. The only thing we'll omit is the most very, very, very difficult clients. We'll only have time to touch on a couple things there. But we will be talking extensively about DID in general. I anticipate that there will be time, I hope there will be time for some case material, but that will be clear. Uh, if, if we talk about cases, it'll be at the end of either or both days. Let me begin with a little historical reference here. I was trained in EMDR in 1991. Well, actually, in 1990, I read the article that Francine Shapiro had published at the time in 87 or 89, I guess it was, when she thought that that article would be enough to teach people how to use EMDR. It was a behavioral therapy, and she described it in an article. I read the article and proceeded to use it. And I was quickly advised to get trained properly in it. And I saw the wisdom of that, got trained in 91, so very early on. And within two weeks, doing exactly what I'd been taught in the training was having some profound case experiences such as these. The first case was a woman who had been in a car accident and she had PTSD, serious PTSD, following the car accident. I did EMDR the way I was trained to do it, and it was looping. And after a time, and I'm sweating bricks and doing changing directions and doing the little bit that I understood in um, interweaves, she turned to me and said, I don't know what this means, but when I was little, I had an imaginary friend. I haven't thought of her in years but she's here with me now, and she's saying, no way am I going to go through that car accident again. So that was my first experience. She turned out to be DID. 